today we are going to start new lectures on law firstly we will start lectures on cpc cpc is considered to be a most difficult subject on the law every student fears studying code of civil procedure however code of civil procedure is a very simple scientific and easy law to understand the thing is that it is divided into various sections orders rules appendix etc this is a unique act in which there are sections as well as orders now the question in your mind will arise that as to why there are sections and orders in this act sections are the substantive law laid down on the subject because in the sections the power is given without sections there cannot be any act as far as orders are concerned in orders detailed procedure regarding those very sections which are to be implemented and how they are to be implemented and what are the rules and regulations governing the implementation of those rules sections has been given in detail in case there was sections only and there were no rules divided into various orders then it would have been very difficult for a student to understand the law because the number of sections would have been in thousands so the legislature in its wisdom at that very juncture when it was laid down had divided the code of civil procedure in various sections as well as the laws or starting with the sections and the law i would like to introduce myself my name is ajay kumar jindal i am practicing on civil side in district courts in dhana i have taught epc code of civil procedure punjab university regional center for 7 years i did my llm masters of law from punjab university chandigarh in the year 1978 i have an experience of around 43 years of advocacy on purely on civil side in district courts in dhana so i am i think that i am competent enough to discuss the provisions of cpc with you my students who have been, who have been attending my classes have always found that cpc is the most easy subject whereas the students from other universities always used to fear that cpc is a very difficult subject because nothing is difficult or nothing is easy it depends upon the person who is teaching you the law who is explaining the law to you so i am don't consider me to be a teacher or yourself consider to me be to your friend and a guide where we can discuss the law at a level in which you can understand because every entrant in the law profession rather in the law college is new to the law so i will discuss the provisions of cpc in different manner i will be teaching the provisions of cpc as if we are progressing in the case so as far as the sections are concerned there are various sections in the code of civil procedure in which various law relating to the procedure has been codified each section or group of sections have been given under different chapters so in order to study any act it is if it is very fundamental to firstly to learn the name of the chapter because the name of the chapter 
always gives you an eye bird's view of what will be contained in the various sections under that chapter. Then there comes orders. There are 150 orders in the Code of Civil Procedure. Order 1 to Rule Order 50 are the various procedural codes, procedural orders which have been given in the CPC. Now the question arises that why the word order has been used in the CPC for codifying the procedural law. Order something carries with it a weight, a sanctity of law and, and which carries certain authority because when we say that I order you, that means I am commanding you. It is a command given by the legislature. So, in various orders, there are various rules framed under that. Now, each order consists of a particular subject and regarding that particular subject, the further rules or sub-rules have been given which simplify or which laid, lays down that as to what the procedure has to be followed. Before the passing of the Code of Civil Procedure, India was divided into various princely states. There was various rulers, kings, nawabs, etc. Every kingdom or every state has its own law. There was no codified law of procedure under which the justice could have been given. So the Britishers, in order to specify as to what should be the procedure, has thought it fit to lay down the code of civil procedure or to legislate, legislate regarding the code of civil procedure. Because unless and until you know that know the fact that in what under what procedure you are going to be right or what is the procedure or what are the remedies available to you under the particular law you will not be able to justify or you will not be able to say anything regarding the subject matter of litigation so in this keeping in this view in mind a unified code of civil procedure was defined and codified by the Britishers. It may be mentioned here that code of civil procedure is such a law which is universally applicable throughout India. Various provisions have been made, various high courts have been provided under the constitution of India. Every high court has been given the powers to legislate and formulate high court orders and rules which are peculiar to the facts and circumstances of the case because India as a whole is a state which is diversified into various cultures, traditions, customs, etc. So some particular customs or rules are applicable to each and every state. So power has been given to every high court lay down the procedure for itself in the form of high court orders and rules. And every high court has provided or has formulated high court orders and rules under which it can be, it can lay down the procedure governing the working of the civil courts in particular. So, under the Code of Civil Procedure, it is such an unique code which gives you a total insight of the procedure, procedural law in the civil court. In a recent judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court of India, it has been held that this code has been in force for more than a century. So it is no longer a procedural law, but it has assumed the character of a 
attentively so procedure cannot be procedure laid down in the cpc cannot be considered to be only procedural but it is substantive law also as per the full bench judgment of the supreme court of india so once it is a substantive law that means the provisions of cpc are to be applied with the same vigor and force with which the other provisions of any other act are to be made applicable so in this scenario it becomes a duty on our part to understand the code of civil procedure and unless and until we are well conversant with the procedural law every and new entrant to the profession will find it very difficult to conduct a case and to know that what is the procedure provided under the act by which he can conduct his own case or he can provide any guidance or assistance to the court because the court will always inquire from the advocate regarding the procedure as to what has to be done or what is the interpretation of a particular section or in a peculiar facts and circumstances of the case what has to be done and what cannot be done so mastery of code of civil procedure as well as the indian evidence act is a must for a practicing lawyer who is who intends to practice on the civil side so this was only an introductory lecture in the next lecture i will be discussing with you that how the case progresses from where the case progresses and in what manner the case is being fought at every stage and what are the procedural law and how you can understand that what are the orders and rules contained in the act thank you